omega-3s are essential fatty acids. There's ALA omega-3, which is plant-based, and EPA, DHA, which are marine oil-based. And, you know, ALA gets converted to EPA, DHA, some of it, you know, which is, which is really, it is the bioactive form. And so in order to have, you know, the significant effects on reproduction and immune function that, you know, that EPA, DHA for the omega-3s are known for, you know, we need that, that conversion to happen. Hello everyone, my name is Luis Ferrero. I'm one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition uh, Black Belt podcast. Uh, and today we'll be diving into an intriguing discussion related to how we can use nutrition in order to improve reproduction. Right. Obviously, we're also diving into a lot of nutrition related stuff, but I do think it's a very nice topic because somehow this is one of the first topics that I actually work as a researcher when I was an undergrad. So I'm super excited for this discussion today. Uh, today, we have Renee Smith, uh, Western Sales Manager with Virtus Nutrition, and Renee will share a lot about that uh, with us today. Said that, hello, Renee. Thank you very much for joining us today. Could you please share a brief background about yourself? Absolutely. Um, so my name is Renee Smith. I'm, I've been with Virtus Nutrition for the past 15 years. You know, all we do is fatty acids. So we, we're very focused on that portion of the diet. And I, you know, I come from Wisconsin originally. So University of Wisconsin grad, um, grew up on a, on a Wisconsin dairy and uh, have been working, you know, in the industry for, for this whole time. So certainly passionate about really helping, uh, you know, especially being in nutrition for the last 15 years, you know, how, how we can really improve the health of these cows by, you know, changing how we, how we feed them. And, you know, it's an exciting area to work in. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. Absolutely, and I, and I do think there is a lot we can uh, discuss and continue to learn from that perspective said that, can you give us a brief review about what are omega-3s, why should we care about them uh, in dairy nutrition, and what are their potential effects to the dairy cows? I know you mentioned health a little bit, but overall. Sure. So omega-3s are essential fatty acids. There's ALA omega-3, which is plant-based, and EPA, DHA, which are marine oil-based. And, you know, ALA gets converted to EPA, DHA, some of it, you know, which is, which is really, it is the bioactive form. And so in order to have, you know, the significant effects on reproduction and immune function that, you know, that EPA, DHA for the omega-3s are known for, you know, we need that, that conversion to happen. And, uh, you know, certainly the, you know, one of the biggest challenges is, you know, back to the mechanism of how EPA, DHA works, um, you know, that conversion from ALA to EPA, DHA is very, very small. It's like half a percent conversion rate. And, uh, you know, you might ask why that's, that's so low. And it's, you know, it's because the enzyme that's used to elongate ALA to EPA, DHA is also used on the omega-6 elongation pathway for linoleic, um, you know, down to steric. And so there's competition for that enzyme. And, you know, the way we feed cows today, we just have lots and lots of omega-6 in our diets. You know, everything that's corn related is 50% roughly omega-6. Cotton seeds, soybeans, they're all very, very high omega-6. So we just have, you know, a lot of competition for that enzyme, which means there's very little uh, EPA, DHA that's actually, you know, available for the cow for all the those essential functions that it's available for. No, absolutely. And, you know, I do think that as we continue to progress with heavier uh, corn silage based diets, uh, which I obviously advocate a lot since corn silage is a key thing for us, uh, definitely this will be more and more important. Part of that, Luis, is just, you know, I mean, the reason we feed those diets is obviously economic and availability and, 
And those things aren't really going to change, right? I mean, we're going to continue to feed, as you said, lots of corn silage, lots of corn products. I mean, they make milk. You know, it's just, you know, it does create a challenge for, you know, without supplementation, how, how do we make sure that the cow has, you know, adequate levels of, you know, such an essential nutrient? Absolutely. And I think our goal as a nutritionist should be to always learn uh, what different types of additives uh, or feeds that we can use in combination with that to continue to improve health performance and reproduction, right? Which is one of our goals today, learn more about reproduction. So, so please tell us a little bit of uh, some of this new research that is available of feeding omega-3s to dairy cows and learning about reproduction, especially about the embryo quality, pregnancy, uh, pregnancy success, which I'm assuming you also help with re reduction in pregnancy loss. Uh, so, so tell us, how does that work and what are you seeing with that? Right. The, the early work done on EPA DHA, which a lot of that was done at the University of Florida, you know, was was all fed at at like 18 grams of EPA DHA. That that's the amount that's in a quarter pound of our of our calcium salt, and so you know, a fairly high level. And we saw you know reductions in aborts by half. You know, 12% abort rate herd you know dropped down to five or six percent. You know, multiple studies. And, and that's that's really you know what we had been doing on on dairies were you know early lactation you know that that uh, 18 grams and then you know it's always good when researchers uh, ask that question how low can you go you know do we need to feed that much can we feed you know basically feed a a very low level to meet that essential nutrient requirement versus you know try to capture all these other performance gains from higher levels. And so there was a couple studies done, you know, right around, um, it was like 2016 and then a follow-up in 2019 um, out, of, out of France, um, the, the, the ENRA lab in France, uh, Dr. Ellis, uh, where they started with an IVF uh, study where they put uh, DHA, one, one micromolar, which is like 0.45 grams in, a, in, a, in the dish, and, and they saw a doubling of that blastocyst. Uh, day seven blastocyst growth, um, which is you know, very significant for uh, 0.45 grams versus the 18 grams that we had been out recommending. Um, and, and they also saw you know, significant improvement in the number of cells per blastocyst. And then they followed up a few years later with a feeding study you know, where they fed EPA DHA you know, also at very low levels and saw very similar improvements in, the, in that blastocyst growth rate. And, and since then, you know, and there's several other studies, but th those were really the, the, you know, these two uh, kind of foundational studies that changed how we thought about, you know, how we apply EPA DHA to dairies, you know, to, you know, can we feed these very low levels to, I mean, really aim at meeting that nutrient requirement that we know is, it, there's a gap. I mean, there's absolutely a gap, um, you know, based on how we feed cows and what we talked about earlier. So if I understood correctly, basically we have, uh, a requirement associated with omega-3s, but in addition to that, if we actually supplement an additional amount, we're going to see all those uh, benefits that you describe in terms of uh, reproduction, but also potentially health, correct? I really think we're, we're below the, the requirement. When you put a 0.45 grams in and you see a doubling of that blastocyst growth rate at day seven, to me that says we're, we're below what I mean, we're, it's our normal, you know, the, the amount of, of uh, you know, that 12% pregnancy loss that we're used to seeing, that's our normal, but it doesn't, I think it doesn't have to be that way. You know, I think it's a nutrient gap that is part of that equation. And, and certainly we've seen that on farm too, when we, you know, when we go in with feeding, you know, aiming for this essential rate, um, you know, I, I mean, I had a herd that was 17% on, on aborts and over two years, they, you know, they came down to that nine, 10%, which is, you know, really nice to see that, that significant of a reduction at, at, at feeding that very low rate. Oh, absolutely. That's such a great improvement. So said that, right, how do we use this information as a nutritionist in order to update our diets and copy with all this uh, potential benefits that we could be offering to dairy farmers? Yeah, I think, you know, the, 
the economics around reproduction have changed in, in the last several years too, which I think you know puts EPA DHA back back on the radar. Um, you know, at, at a you know looking at you know, in the reproduction and heifer programs, you know, we generally that hasn't been a focus, but you know, we've seen really good responses that nutritionists that have that have added EPA DHA into these breeding age heifers, targeting in that, you know, prior to prior to breeding for 30 days and then and then post breeding till till confirmation. Um, certainly those are, that are doing IVF, you know, there's a lot of EPA DHA you know, being utilized in IVF, the really high dollar embryos and a lot of money spent on those genetics. Um, that's a, a no brainer to ha have uh, EPA DHA in those in those uh, donor and, and recip diets. Um, you know, but, you know, as a whole, you know, we look at, I mean, why cows leave the herd reproduction is still the number one reason. And, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of benefit from improving the efficiency of that reproductive program. Oh, absolutely, and certainly brings a lot of uh, value uh, to be able to solve some of those issues. Uh, if I understood you correctly, uh, so it's not just about the, the lactating dairy cows then, so, so you can also use uh, some benefits of the omega-3s to, to heifers, uh, as well as dry cows, I'm assuming? Yes, we, I mean, we're, we're really feeding it across the board, you know, tar targeting in, in heifers in the, in that breeding period to really help with reproduction since there, there's such a huge amount of, you know, our future herd that is coming out of those, those virgin heifers. And then, and then, you know, we've also backed up those recommendations into the dry period because the, the second mechanism, you know, that's just as important as the reproduction is that immune function and resolving inflammation. And, and you've got, you know, calving certainly is the number one, you know, period that she, you know, where she experiences inflammation and then dry off is really second to that. And so really trying to make sure she has adequate levels of EPA, DHA in the tissue to have a healthy resolution of inflammation. Absolutely. Well, all great information. I'm sure all the nutritionists, you know, that, that currently follow our podcast will be very excited to to learn about and hopefully implement on farm. Uh, so thank you again, Renee, for, for joining us today. Uh, thank you at home uh, for, for joining us and, and for your continued support of our podcast. We really appreciate you and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.